Hello Spirit family, my name is Stephen Moctezuma and as you may or may not have heard, my brother David Diga Hernandez has just become a father. His precious baby girl Aria Rose Hernandez has finally made her debut and her and her mom are doing awesome. David sends his thank you to all who have been praying and please, please continue to pray for him and his family as they enjoy their new miracle. So show him some love in the comment section below congratulating the new mom and dad. And as always guys, me and Nick Tarina are here to worship with you, so I pray that you get this worship song and put it in your heart. I'll see you in a few. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. Till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Your love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer slave to fear for I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I can stand and sing. I am a child of You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. I am a child of God I am a child of God So I have the honor and the privilege of bringing something to you guys that is so deep rooted in my heart and in my soul i pray that you would feel the same exact way about it and that is worship pure simple worship
And not only worshiping God with our hands or lifting up our voices to Him, but worship in our daily lives, uh, devotions to God, praying to God, understanding the voice of God. So I want you guys to really hone in and I'm going to give you three keys that I believe can really change not only your worship, but everything you do with God. So let's get into this. So I want to ask you guys a question. Have you ever been hungry? And no, not for food. Well, yes, for food. But I'm talking about a hunger that's so deep. I'm talking about a hunger for the Word of God, the presence of God, and His touch. Follow me now in John 6.35 in the NIV. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. You know, I believe we get caught up in the idea that if we just read a little bit and pray a little bit every single day, we're good. But how many of you guys know that God has not called us just to, just to be surface level. He's called us to be deep, deep with Him. I can give you an example. A desperate man does not just ask for a taste. He eats until he's satisfied. But the good thing about the Lord is you can always consume the Word and never get tired of it. So to be hungry after the things of God essentially means to always want the things of God. Um, how many of you guys know when you get hungry physically, man, you'll do anything to get that food, especially if you haven't eaten for a couple of hours. And I want you guys to really think of what happens when you don't eat. Number one, you get exhausted. Number two, you might get grouchy. Number three, you might get sleepy. And I mean, the list goes on and on of what happens when you don't, con when you don't eat and fill your body with the nutrients that it needs. Same thing with the Word of God. If you're not in the Word, if you're not digging deep in this, in this beautiful thing God has left us, you're going to be feeling exhausted spiritually. You're going to be acting out in the flesh a little bit more. And you're just going to be downright unhappy. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's common. It's truth. And I really want to encourage you guys, stay hungry for the Word. So my first point again is staying hungry for the Word. Um, I think this is such an essential thing, not only for worship, but literally everything in your life. So again, guys, stay hungry. So my next point I want to bring to you guys is something I think is very, very, very vital in our walk with God and in our worship life with God. And that's tapping into the well through worship. Turn with me now. John 4, 13. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman then said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. So many of you know that story. It's the woman at the well. But I want to take that story and peel back some of the things and really dig into the fundamentals of what this story is talking about. Now let's take, for instance, a well. A well has always been used to sustain and maintain a steady supply of water, even in the midst of a drought. You see, Jesus is our well. In the most harshest of times, in the most darkest of times of your life, if you are not pulling from that well, you are going to feel it. You're going to feel exhausted. You're going to feel like you've been in the worst position you've ever been in. But if you really understand that you need to tap into the sustaining place of that well, things can change. You know, when we tap into the presence and the place of true exhortation in regards to worship, the Holy Spirit keeps a steady flow of His sustaining presence in your life. You know, tapping into the well through worship is something that a lot of people kind of miss because we can get lost in the sounds, we can get lost in the sights, all the lights blinding sometimes, the beams right in your eyes, trust me, I know. <laughs> um, how many of you guys realize it is Him who gets a hold of us as well while we're worshiping, while we're digging for that well? And the Holy Spirit helps us to see clearly the beauty and the majesty of the King of Kings. Worshiping Him not only realigns our focus, but brings a sense of refreshment just as water does to the body. So guys, I'm telling you, once you understand how to tap into the well of worship, your life can completely be changed. 
I can tell you, and I can tell you from experience that some of the best times I've had with the Lord is literally on my face crying before Him, listening to either instrumental or a worship song, and just listening for the voice of God and, and hearing Him and, and understanding, oh, He is here. He's with me. So guys, tap into the well. Tap into the well. Now, my last point, I want you guys to really understand because I believe this is something that we kind of often get attacked with a lot, even in a worship service. So my last point I want to bring to you is when your posture changes, your worship changes. Now, many of you may be asking, what is posture? And posture simply means attitude. The way you approach God, whether it be physically, emotionally, or spiritually, can all affect how you communicate with Him while you're in a worship service. Now, I want to share a very silly story that I think can kind of go along the theme of what we're talking about here and having the right attitude. Uh, So me and David were coming back from a seven-hour flight, and I was called to do worship as soon as I landed. Now, to be real with you, I didn't want to. Everything inside of me was like, dude, you just did a seven-hour flight. You need rest. You deserve rest. But how many of you guys realized that my attitude and my posture was off? And I want you to really think about that. And how many times have you been in that same situation where God is calling you to do something and your posture is way off? Your attitude is way off about it. So I want to encourage you guys and tell you, you know, you got to be poised and ready to worship through anything, through all things. And then when you really realize the power through worship, everything can change. You know, coming to the Father with an open heart and open hands is one of the best remedies for anything that life has to throw at you. Surrendering to Him not only takes the weight off of you, but it gives you hope. And when you have hope, anything can happen. So I want to encourage you guys with this final thought. No matter what you're doing in life, when you come into the house of God, ready to worship, or whether you're in your prayer room, ready to worship, be in a position where God can truly, truly transform you. Let all the emotions aside. Let all the anger aside. Let everything go and just focus on Him. Now, I want to encourage you guys with one more scripture, and it's found in Psalms 57, 7 through 11. My heart, O God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake my soul. Awake harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples, for your great love is reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be all over the earth. Now I want to pray with you guys and encourage you. And I pray that God would help you to understand how to have a hunger, how to understand to tap into that well of worship, and how to posture yourselves when you're coming into the house of God. So let's pray. So Father, I pray God that you would allow, Father, us to just see you in a better way Father, for us to be hungry after the things of you, God. For us to know, God, that no matter what we're going through, we know we can go to you and find fresh water. And Father, I pray that you would just align us with your word. Father, that you would align us with the Holy Spirit and that we would be able to understand how to truly worship you each and every single day. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now I want to welcome the new members of Spirit Church. There you are on the screen with all of your beautiful, cool-looking names. We want to say thank you. We love you, and we're praying for you just as much as you're praying for us. Now, if you want to be a part of the Spirit Church family, go ahead and visit davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. There you'll find all the information needed to sign up. But right now, I want to go ahead and get to some comments. One of my favorite parts of what we do here. Now, as you guys know, my good friend, and you've seen him on a program, Nick Tejerina, 
has an awesome, awesome soaking worship playlist that you can use for your prayer time, for your alone time with God. I personally use a couple of his songs. They're legit. Um, but here are some comments from last week's videos that he's put out. So Tina Marie writes, Holy Spirit filled worship. What a beautiful and peaceful melody that pierces right into your soul. To God be all the glory. God bless you, Nick. Continue on letting the Lord use you to impact many through your music. And that was from one of his latest videos, Waterfalls. I encourage you guys, go check it out. We also have Princess Mick. This playlist is great for meditating on God and his own word. Fantastic job, Encounter TV. Thank you. Well, thank you. And Sonia Rose Lyle writes, Thank you for sharing. It's great to see musicians use their gift for the glory of God. May we have opportunities to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others and see individuals be embraced by the overflowing love of King Jesus. God bless you always. And that comment came from his video, Overflowing Love. So now I want to go ahead and read a couple of comments from my worship playlist that really encouraged me. And this is from Eric Bradfield Jr. And he writes, This is a wonderful time to upload this song. It speaks of where I am right now. I want him at this moment. Without him, I am nothing. And that is from the song, Here Again. Jordan Daniel writes, This song is really flowing deep inside my heart as it's being sung continuously. I don't know how much I can explain how I feel deep within me. Thanks, brother, for this beautiful worship. And that is from Here Again. Repent or Perish writes, Because of Stephen, I started watching this channel more. If I hadn't found his worship first, I would have never known this channel. Now I cry with each video David makes. Thank you, brothers. And that is from our Father. And I just want to say thank you so much. And I'm so glad that this channel has reached you in a deep way like that. And the last comment comes from Luisa Pizarro. I love their humility. That's why God is taking them far. There's no doubt that God is really using you guys. Please keep that relationship with Him. Keep getting that amazing godly wisdom to teach us out here. We need more vessels like you guys, preaching the word as it is written. God bless you. So I want to share a scripture with you guys, and it's found in Genesis 22, and it goes like this. Abraham got up early in the morning and saddled his donkey. He took two of his servants and his son Isaac. He had split wood for the burnt offering. He set out for the place God had directed him. On the third day, he looked up and saw the place in the distance. Abraham told his two young servants, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I are going over there to worship. Then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and gave it to Isaac, his son, to carry. He carried the flint and the knife. The two of them went off together. Isaac said to Abraham, his father, Father, yes, my son, we have flint and wood, but where's the sheep for the burnt offering? Abraham said, Son, God will see to it that there's a sheep for the burnt offering. And they kept on walking together. They arrived at the place to which God had directed him. Abraham built an altar. He laid out the wood. Then he tied up Isaac and laid him on the wood. Abraham reached out and took the knife to kill his son. Just then, an angel of God called him out of the heaven. Abraham, Abraham, yes, I'm listening. Don't lay your hand on that boy. Don't touch him. Now I know how fearlessly you fear God. You didn't hesitate to place your son, your dear son, on the altar for me. Just as Abraham was willing to give up his son Isaac, so we too should freely give of our finances. Now I want to tell you guys where your finances go. It goes to the funding of the gospel. It goes to people being changed and transformed through what you give. Every penny counts. Now, I want to encourage you guys, if you'd like to donate, go ahead and visit davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Or if you want to take it a step further and become a $30 a month member or more, we are going to send you a signed copy of either Carriers of the Glory, 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare, or his newest book, Encountering the Holy Spirit in Every Book of the Bible. My personal favorite so far. Um, but again, guys, I just want to say thank you so much for allowing me to come into your home, be a part of uh, your life in this moment. And guys, as always, like Diga says, nothing's impossible with God, but I want to encourage you and tell you to never stop seeking.
I'll see you next time. God bless. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.